dear Aries, this is a love reading a prediction for Sagittarius season 22nd of November to 21st of December 2019 with me Queen of Cups Tarot. Uh, first reading I did for this uh, was the for the birthday sign so happy birthday to all Sagittarius out there and I'm reading uh, the other uh, readings in the order of most appreciated videos from the previous love reading published for Scorpio season. So you can see the order I read in this time around at the community section of my channel. And this will be a love reading for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising Sign and Venus, Vedic or Tropical. The reading can go both ways. The drama is the same, but it can be different castings to the different roles by the universe. So, when I tell you that this is you, it can as well be the person or situation you are dealing with. Use your own intuition and recognition to determine who is who in this reading for you. And I will start shuffling your cards and I use the Golden Universal with Roberto de Angelis. So, when I open your deck here, I see the Hangman in the reverse and the Ten of Wands uh, in the reverse. So it seems like you have had enough of a bad thing and you're kind of going to put put it down and, uh, you know, do whatever the age you need to do to get out of this uh, uh, feeling of being stuck or, or prevented from moving forward. It might also be that uh, someone has asked you for something that you previously have refused to do. Uh, but uh, to be able to move forward, uh, you are going to have to uh, accept uh, the change that comes with this. And um, But as I, as I also said, for some of you, it will be that you have to sacrifice something that you have put in a lot of effort into. So you just put it down and walk away. And that was your key to liberty and to get out of stagnation. So I call the divine with love and light and here we have the four of swords in the reverse with uh, the ten of wands so it seems like um, there's a situation where this has been going on either silent treatment or there has been some kind of power game where the one that gives the least uh, wins or the one that shows least interest wins or the one that shows least effort wins um, and um, it's starting to wobble a little bit it's starting to um, not be such a, a glorious place anymore to be the winner. What do you win? You win nothing. So um, I think that you might have been wrongly treated by someone and you have kind of cast them out uh, in the cold. Uh, but now you're starting to feel like more that you want to solve the situation than to just, you know, uh, show that you care the least. Uh, for a person that you probably cared a lot for but for some of you it will still be this that you're going to have to let go of a certain situation even if you don't want to because it's driving you ill so it's um, like you're a little bit split areas into two groups is what I'm feeling so uh, I call the four archangels in the four corners of the world so it, the key here is to be the bigger person and do the thing that you know is right even if it's difficult so if you feel that it wouldn't be right to, you know, reach out, um, the best way uh, thing for both of you would be to walk away, then you continue on that road. And if you know that uh, you would be the bigger person if you reached out and that this would lead to some kind of, um, um, some kind of um, um, forward movement for you, then this is what you need to do. So the key is this card to be, you know, um, elevating yourself above yourself, elevating yourself above your, you know, your instincts that you want wants to give them another, <laughs> you know, right one. <laughs> and instead, just, okay, take a deep breath. And what would Jesus have done? <laughs> so you can ask yourself that. So then it might be that you need to put down an old quarrel or an old beef with someone to be able to to be able to move on okay so some old point of view that you have had that was legit it was legit you you were allowed to have it but now might be the end of the days for that point of view that you need to now it's something else that is required okay so six elements 
and we have the hero font in the reversed Yes, it's the old point of view, like you, you were very steady in this point of view and, and you didn't want to change your mind. But now it might be time to be a little bit more open. You don't have to be the one sitting on top of the hill that I pushed everyone else down. Um, it might be the time to come down from the hill and, and start with the communication with others and see if you can make certain things work, uh, work again. Uh, but for some of you, it's still this that... It's just about walking away because sometimes the situation is too hopeless uh, to ever thinking of healing. So you need to know within yourself uh, what is this, you know, the key here. So imagine you were, what would Jesus have done? <laughs> okay, and do that. Okay, so six elements, earth, wind, fire, water, spirit and ether to join us here today and to give us eight of cups so someone is definitely walking away here uh, to give us a clear view reading for my dear Aries viewers so I want my dear Aries to have love a really love uh, Empress and six of swords so this is um, this is a tricky one we also have the eight of cups so six of swords is like moving from one way of being where things were a little bit uncomfortable to a place where things will become more comfortable and it's also the empress which is um, kind of connected with the strength card that we saw being the bigger person being able to give of oneself being able to sacrifice oneself uh, being able to uh, to be the one that looks out for everyone's best interest and sometimes that best interest is to walk away uh, from a situation that is anyway hopeless uh, so um, whatever you do here think of terms of what would be the best for everyone in this situation because that will be the most rewarding for you in the end so uh, I want my dear Aries to have love in their lives and to find themselves in loving relationships I also want you to have creative success and to be able to walk on your highest path towards your highest destiny okay so I'll just tune in for a few seconds here to you and the energy of uh, Sagittarius season for you, Aries. Aries, okay. Okay. So uh, this is the new bottom of the deck and it's three of wands. So it's time for some kind of negotiation or communication or talking things through and sorting things out and deciding like might be deciding how do we go on from here or who would have who will have the house and how will we arrange things with the kids. It's um, like a negotiation sometimes with lawyers where you need to, uh, you know, know what you can negotiate with and where you are very steadfast with your view so certain things are not negotiable and other things you can negotiate about and decide this before you go into the negotiation uh, so you, you will know how to get the best result from this uh, and it might also show communication coming in uh, and we have a six of cups here so this is the old bottom of the deck so the three of wands together with six of cups it's almost like um, maybe someone has asked you for forgiveness and you have been reluctant to give them that but maybe you need to come down from your high horse and you know accept the forgiveness it doesn't mean that you can continue the relationship uh, we had both six of swords and um, eight of cups and ten of wands in reverse showing a person kind of giving up and walking away but doing so and and being friends or being um you know, not being out to hurt the other person, but actually make a good closure seems to be what is aimed for here. It doesn't say that all of your relationships is over and done with, but um, it's, um, it's like a certain uh, chapter is going to be closed, okay? And it can be a relationship or it can be a behavior, uh, like an old behavior that's, uh, it's outdated. There's no need to behave like that anymore and either it's for you or for the other person so it's something that's over uh, and this is um, what's on your conscious mind about this person mostly on your mind and this is the situation and this is what's on their conscious mind about you this is their your feelings towards them 
the common energies between you two, their feelings towards you. This is your behaviors and attitudes towards them. Uh, this is the outcome. And this is their behaviors and attitudes towards you. So what you have seen so far with me shuffling the cards, it's like the foundation is what I'm getting up uh, when I'm shuffling the cards. It can sometimes it go full circle and also shows the outcome, but <laughs> but usually it shows the foundation to this situation. So um, if you're watching early, you will probably recognize yourself most in the opening cards. Uh, and this is the prediction uh, for um, Sagittarius season. So you will know what to expect and how to prepare Okay, uh, so you can watch this now and you can also watch when the Sagittarius season hits and when you are mid through and when you are on the way out. <laughs> so you can uh, revisit and, and um, um, you will understand more as time goes by. So uh, I will show you this situation first. And the situation is another three. So we have the Empress number three and we also had uh, the three of wands and here comes the three of coins. Uh, so it shows the situation where there's uh, is a possibility for a healthy, uh, healthy forward movement. Okay, a healthy forward movement where people come together and realize that this is the things that needs to be done. Everyone gets their task and they go on doing that to improve and better the situation or improve and better their health, improve and better their relationship or whatever it is that needs to be improved but here it's being done uh, so that's a very hopeful sign uh, this is what's on your conscious mind uh, about them and uh, seven of coins in the reverse so you feel very it's like you have given enough in a situation so um, it's like you're starting to give up so either they are on board with your ideas of change or, or you're probably going to you know pack a suitcase and go uh, because the seven of, one, uh, seven of coins in reverse is a spiritual challenge to know how long you should invest your time and energy into a situation before you call it a day. And with the seven of coins in reverse, you usually call it a day or you, you know, you are up to that point when and there's an ultimatum coming where you want to put, give an ultimatum to the other person. Either we get married or I'm off. Okay, I have waited, you know, seven years <laughs> with fat and skinny cows <laughs> and now that's a, a reference to a to a story like a prediction um in the bible uh, so i'm not a, a bible freak um uh, i'm not saying that people that knows the bible is freaks but for me it's m more an historical interest point of view and also like a philosophic philosoph <laughs> philosophic philosophic uh, uh, ground that we all um, in the Western world can can share. Okay, uh, so and this is what's on their conscious mind about you. And we have a ten of uh, cups in the reversed. So they also seem to know that time is running out. They feel a little bit chased by this, that they had a happy go, a happy run, and now they might be out of time. Uh, so. Um, it seems like you might have spoiled this person a little bit. Uh, so they now have very high standards for uh, what they want and how they want to be treated while you have been waiting here like Cinderella <laughs> and not, uh, you know, with uh, dirty clothes full of ash. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> see here. Uh, okay, so without any headline on this, it's one is a three and the other one is a girl. That's in a girl and a boy, I think. They are mirroring each other. Okay, so life is a series of constantly shifting cycles. When we resist change, we resist the natural flow of life and create unnecessary stress. Go with the flow. You will be surprised where it leads. So I think it's this with the end of the chapter for you that you have been uh, patiently waiting for something for a very long time. And now it's either on or off. Uh, either, you know, uh, win or lose. Um work on this or give it up and um, whatever you know is to be the right thing to do here the things you kind of know that you need to do but you resist it that's the thing you need to do um, and um, you know um, go with the flow you will be surprised where it leads so it will end up good for you uh, it will be a better place for you and uh, this is for the 10 of 
cups. Emotions are a natural and necessary part of life, but they can also distort your perception and cloud your vision. In order to see things clearly, you must let go of resentment. So, what I feel here is for one, that this person has an idealistic view of relationships. And they might also have an idealistic view of what they deserve. Uh, so uh, this is a person that is very is very easy for them to go, uh, you know, where the grass is greener. Uh, so they might have asked too much of you and of life in in some parts, but um, it's also something has happened with you in the past or has happened to them in the past that they are punishing you for. I don't know really what it is, but it might be like what the, how their parents used to treat them or didn't treat them at all. Or so you're being punished for something. Um, and that's why you are not getting what you want, because they are punishing you for this. Um, and I don't think it's you that was the guilty one from the beginning. I think this is a pattern that they carry from, for example, childhood, or it can be a karma between you two. So you might not remember what you did, but you did something. <laughs> But it was in the past life. <laughs> okay. So um, but for many of you, you will see that you will be punished for the things that, for example, your partner's parents have done towards them. So if they were overwhelming with their child, now they don't want to commit to you. Uh, if they were abandoning their child, uh, they now always accuse you of abandoning them and so on. Okay. So this is the... Uh, common energies between you two and we have a chariot in reverse so it shows you're like you're stuck in the ditch it's stuck between your different opinions about each other and your different opinions about this road and how the relationship should be and what the one should do and what the other should do uh, so um, it's like you have locked yourself in your opinions and in your different emotions and that you're entitled to have these certain emotions but no one is really you know, look, focusing on the end goal and, and what they want to be the end result. Instead, uh, you're looking too much into the past and uh, what has, you know, been the flow underneath the bridge. Uh, and this is your feelings uh, for this other person. And we have a four of wands. So you definitely want to, uh, to be with them. And you have been waiting for them to also say a full, strong on yes to you. And uh, they haven't been able to because of this old karma that makes them uh, stuck in the past. Uh, so it seems like a difficult situation for you where I feel you are not really guilty to the situation, but you're carrying the, uh, the burden of the situation. So, but as I said, don't think that you're unjustly treated. Probably uh, <laughs> you, have, um, you have done something in a previous lifetime uh, where you have been guilty of such. So that's why you are in this situation, not as a punishment. It's just like a feedback, we can say. Uh, so, and this is the, their feelings uh, towards you. And we have a Knight of Pentacles here. So they don't want to, they don't want to invest in anything. Uh, they, they are not sure of what they want to do. They are not sure that they want to go with this. They are not sure they want to they don't want to go anywhere you know they want to be st stuck in the ditch they like it where you are right now i think they like it when you are kind of the guilty one that needs to jump through hoops to make them love you um so it's this is their safety zone to have you kind of an arm's length distant but still you know um being in some kind of relationship with you maybe a situationship uh, would be my um my label on this but this person uh, are so unsure of their investment that someone needs to take charge either they need to i don't think they will take charge so if you want something with this person you're going to have to tell them what to do that's what i'm feeling you are going to have to tell them that this is how it is and now we have been together for <laughs> i say seven years <laughs> and we still haven't uh, gotten to the point where we are engaged or married so um now we are going to uh we are going to go to the courthouse and get married and um, either this person say yes or they say um, no <laughs> but you won't have a forward movement uh without you pushing this person because they are very happy where they are and in they are kind of in this situation where they 
are not making any decisions. So they are not saying yes, they are not saying no, they are not saying anything about anything. They are just uh, uh, trying to keep status quo is what I'm feeling. Just keeping you hanging might be what's their end game here because they're so scared about uh, changes and I think they're per particularly very scared of power. Uh, I think that they in some um, way, maybe a little bit covered way, have power over you. Uh, you have no power over them and that's how they like it. But at the same time, it feels like, like a shy person or a person that's easily get overwhelmed or easily over emotional. Um, so they don't have it easy either. And that's why they are staying at this uh, weighing point where they don't have to make decisions. Uh, because they feel scared about anything and uh, like moving in any direction would be scary. Uh, but I think if you take leadership in this situation, uh, this person will follow you because this is a follower. Even if they have taken previously have taken control over the situation, they are the type of person that would follow. So if you want something with this person, um, you need to show them the direction. Okay, so this is your behaviors and attitudes uh, towards them. And we have an eight of wands. So I'm thinking this ultimatum is coming. You're going to have this serious discussion because you love this person, wants to be with this person and enough with the, you know, the, the playing around and, you know, being on and off or uh, not having a real relationship, not being able to have real discussions and talking about difficult things and sorting things out and having progress and having, um, you know, this mutual conversations where we say, I didn't like what you said. And the other person say, I'm sorry for that. Uh, why did you feel bad about this? And you tell them, well, it felt like this and this. And they say, okay, now I understand you. I will try to think about that. Remind me if I do that uh, thing again, because for me, it looks more like this and this, but uh, I acknowledge and respect uh, your feelings. And this is how both people should do. But I think that this person is much more convenient with sticking their head in the sand and n not um, making any improvements and just walking on this thin edge where where the situation can fall and collapse at any time. It's like a, they want to live in a house of cards. I don't know exactly why, but it makes them feel safe. And you want a stable ground and you want to have be able to communicate about things. So this is the important, it's an important situation in this relationship where you either get them on board or you, you know, row away on your, on your own and find someone that's more communicative and more willing to, you know, work together with you in this relation, in a relationship. Okay, so this is their behaviors and attitudes towards you. And uh, the high priestess in reverse. So it's like a person being very secretive and they have a lot of opinions and they feel a lot of things, but they don't tell you. They might be like a little bit too well raised for um, their best well-being, like a person that have been told, don't do that, don't do that, don't do this, don't do this. So now they don't do any of these things and they don't tell you when you are doing something that's intimidating them and or scares them or hurts them. They just tolerate it. Uh, but in the same time, they don't give you like even the little finger when it comes to the relationship. So they are very convenient probably to be with, but you never know where they where you have this person because they don't share their opinions and and they can share opinions about certain things, but not the things that matters. They have a secret very close to their heart. Uh, it's something how they have gotten hurt. And I think they don't trust people very much. If you want this person, you need to show yourself trustworthy and you also need to uh, squeeze some <laughs> trustworthiness and responsibility out of them <laughs> because uh, I don't think this is a very responsible person. So this is the outcome. Oh, <laughs> four of pentacles, three of pentacles, four of pentacles. It seems like a typical girl boy situation. Here's the girl wanting to fix things and here's the boy <laughs> don't want to fix things. We don't need to talk about it. So um, I don't know how this is going to go, but you are in a situation that millions of people are in where one wants to discuss the problem and move ahead. You know, we get the show on the road. We talk things through. Even if we are different, we talk things through. We balance things between us and we get a show on the road. But the other person says, nope, I don't want to do this. I want to stay with how it is. So I think... Um, 
the masculine here, it can be in a female or a male person, has been very uh, feeling very safe with having the kind of power or um, true manipulation or true, you know, pulling the strings in, in secret. Uh, so I think this person uh, feels like they don't want to change things, okay? They think, that, they think that they are already on top and you are on the bottom. And if they change things to things being equal, it's going to be bad for them. So, and this is, um, it's like a little boy or a little girl uh, that never got their will through when they were small. Uh, so they have always been pushed around and like other people competing with them always. So when they finally find a situation where they are kind of on top, they want to stay there. So they don't know that uh, equalness and cooperation is very rewarding. Uh, they think something will be stolen from them. Uh, so uh, this is not a situation that human beings have been able to solve. How to get around that, for example, uh, women <laughs> don't... Uh, uh, own more than a very small percent of the uh, Earth's resources. And the guys doesn't want to give that up. They want to continue having things this way because they don't know how it would be if they would live in equal equalness to females. So that's one example. But you can see this in so many different ways, in so many different situations. Uh, so it's all about this person being scared of coming down from their top position and, and sharing themselves on equal terms with the world. Um, and that is in combination with a person that have been probably very bullied as a small child is what I'm feeling. Like a person that have been, uh, guys can be like this towards one another. When they are in a group, they kind of, uh, they kind of hackle each other. And if uh, someone has an achievement, they say, oh, how could you make that happen? You, you're so stupid. So I don't understand how you could get that job or this thing but if there's girls uh, they usually say uh, oh I'm so happy for you so now when you have this job maybe you can get me in too uh, so it's more like cooperation than you know um, proving who's the bigger boss here uh, and this unfortunately goes on in the relationship where the one person is trying to their best and trying to fix the situation male or female because guys can act more from their feminine and kind of not um, feel uh, very comfortable in a masculine culture either. Uh, and it can be that vice versa, like a girl finding their, their ways in masculine culture. But so I think this person here, usually you Aries, have been trying for a very long time to 7-7 seven, seven, get this to happen with a person that wants, don't want to give up an inch because they keep it all a secret as well. It's just going on underneath the surface. They don't say openly, I want to be the one having power in the relationship. They more say uh, things when you want to talk about things where they know that they are going to have to give in and be a bigger, bigger better person. They rather say, uh, I don't know why you're, um, you're so uptight with these small things. Why can't you just let it go? So that's how they keep power, like in the head, like with hidden manipulation. And um, well, uh, this is what's going on here. This is the kind of dynamic. So um, you have a chance here, four of wands, four of pentacles. You have a chance to take control over the situation because uh, people like this, guys or girls, if they get a leader that's stronger than them, they usually subordinate themselves to this and they go along with it. But it will be a big fight until then. And then they will just, oh, okay, so you're the boss, do whatever you want. Uh, so this is what you need to make happen or you need to give up on the situation. It's kind of up to you. Okay, so I will take uh, from, sorry, Mystical Wisdom Oracle deck. I will take a, a advice card for you. Sorry. So, legends, learn from those who inspire you. Um, first, I'm coming to think of is uh, Lysistrata. Strata. It's, um, sorry, it's a um, comedy, uh, I think, with Aristophanes. I say this in Swedish because I don't know the name in English, but um, it was. Um, uh, civil war between Athens and Sparta and the women in Athens and Sparta got sick and tired of the civil war so they refused their men's sex until they kind of give in and uh, 
or refused them relationship until they gave in and uh, you know made peace uh, between uh, the cities okay so you have the opportunity to rise to great heights listen learn and gain insight from those whose path you wish to follow gather information and do some research into your legend learn what is best for you right now to follow your dreams Folk tales describe how the main personality in a legend copes with the events of everyday life. Deep within the tales is a lesson to pass on to you. The story may be of miracles, spiritual courage, or even fairy tales. True legends such as John of Arc or Nelson Mandela courageously took on battles to overcome obstacles and preserve to meet triumph and victory. I gather inspiration, strength, and insight from true legends. And I think it's not only about fighting, you know, uh, being the winner here. I'm thinking it's more about being a good leader and a good teacher and someone that this other person, this little scared rabbit here, can trust uh, to take uh, authority and to lead the way. So um, in the beginning, I talked about this uh, Bible uh, tale about the um, man that predicted seven good years and seven bad years for an Egyptian pharaoh. So maybe that could be a story for you to check into too. And okay, so my dear Aries, uh, if you still are puzzled and need more information, you can go to my channel page. You can click my little uh, Queen of Cups icon there and you will see uh, some readings up for uh, November, the four elements reading. So you can watch the one for fire signs. Um, and you can also watch the other ones and see what resonates for you. Yeah, I also have past, um, no, sorry, I also have pick a card readings up uh, that you can check out. And uh, more of these will come, uh, I hope, I has scheduled anyway to do this, <laughs> more of these pick a card readings. Um, also, you can check out the love um, uh, bonus reading for Scorpio season. Uh, because that one is hitting uh, us right now. So, okay, uh, my dear Aries, take really good care. And until next time, uh, bye-bye.